Howdy, my name is Alarian, and welcome to my Thermal Expansion Energy Spotlight. The uh, Thermal Expansion mod is a very small, very concise, and amazingly useful and powerful uh, Minecraft uh, add-on that interacts primarily with Buildcraft, but it, it does all kinds of things. And uh, I have started using it as an almost wholesale replacement for industrial craft. One of the things that thermal expansion adds is a new mechanic for transferring and storing energy. And I'm going to go over their energy mechanic. But first of all, let's talk about Buildcraft's energy. There are two engines that Buildcraft produces that can generate Minecraft Joules, MJ. That's the Buildcraft unit of energy. Uh, the Sterling engine that used to be, wow, hello NEI. Let's uh, get you out of the way so we can see this. Okay, the Sterling engine used to be called the Steam engine, but it doesn't use water, it doesn't make steam, so they changed the name in, uh, in build, uh, recent builds of Buildcraft 3. And it consumes solid fuels and produces one joule a tick when running. So if we flip the switch down here, turn this engine on, it generates one joule a tick. And it is really cheap and uh, pretty safe to use for the most part. As long as there's somewhere for the energy to go, it sends it out and it works out pretty well. The next in, but it only generates one joule a tick and a lot of operations, I mean high-end uh, buildcraft things can use hundreds of thousands of, uh, of joules to, uh, to get anything done. The combustion engine is the big one, and this one is really, really hairy. It, uh, it likes to blow up and uh, destroy things, but it, uh, because it uses, uh, it needs to be cooled. It burns liquid fuel, and it can burn a variety of liquid fuels. We'll go ahead and give it a can of refined fuel here, one bucket worth, but you also need to give it some water, so it's got some water. And if we fire this sucker up, it go, it t you'll notice it's pulsing a lot faster, and it's outputting six joules a tick. And it just really, really goes. The problem is, this once, once the heat reaches a certain point, it starts consuming the water. If it fails to consume the water, it starts to overheat and explodes, and it's bad. So, people set up really convoluted methods for... Uh, making sure that their combustion engines stay, oh, that one's done, uh, making sure their combustion engines stay cool, but it's not really safe. There's really nothing you can do to guarantee that an unattended combustion engine will run forever without exploding. So, you know, your mileage may vary on that. Um, but, you know, it can also burn lava, and it burns lava at uh, one joule a tick, uh, just like a... Uh, Actually, a uh, oh, it can't take it out of cans, can it? Let me see if it takes it out of a bucket. Yeah, I can take it out of a bucket. Um, you know, so it it burns the same thing, but you know, whatever. In uh, in response to those two, let's go ahead and just get rid of those. Thermal expansion adds two engines as well. They add an actual steam engine which uses water. Those are, uh, this is uh, in millibuckets, I guess. So if we fill up some water, put some water in there. And one other thing is it uses the thermal expansion mechanics. It doesn't actually need uh, a lever to turn it on. If it has fuel and work to do, it runs. If there's no work to do, then it throttles itself down. So if we pop one unit of steam in here, you'll notice that you, it consumed a whole bucket of water, or just about a bucket of water. And it's starting to warm up. As it heats up, the energy output will uh, increase. It eventually starts producing, um, uh, or ticking at two uh, joules per tick, as opposed to one joule a tick. So it burns solid fuel twice as, uh, twice as fast as a... Uh, as a regular Stirling engine, you see this here is how much it's heated up. And it just goes and goes and goes and goes. So these are really nice. They're, they're more space efficient and they're, uh, you know, they're a little bit smarter. I think it can burn cans of lava too, but we won't worry about that. The magmatic engine actually burns lava. 
And so we will put some lava in there. And it burns lava in the same way as this. It starts off at 10%, and it'll eventually go up to burning at 4 joules a tick. Um, it is only 90%. It is only 90% efficient, and uh, so there is a little bit of energy lost, but it's doing it four times as fast. So you can go through a lot of lava. So if you're setting these things up in the Nether, you can really, really get a lot of energy out. Uh, you get uh, what is it? The the default value in the config files is uh, that you get uh, 20 uh, thousand. Uh, 20 kilojoules out of a single bucket of lava uh, if you burn it in a uh, in a regular buildcraft engine and so you will get uh, 18 kilojoules uh, out of here but you will get it four times as fast once it gets going you see it's already spinning up and it's really starting to burn pretty quick so those are nice and uh, and I like them. we currently use a uh, uh, a magmatic pumping station in our uh, in in our live world to uh, to make sure that or yeah we, we use a magmatic engine to uh, to refill our batteries we've got uh, 18 of these suckers plugged up into a single energy cell this is actually permanent storage for uh, for buildcraft energy uh, Buildcraft by itself doesn't have any storage mechanic that it uh, provides at all it only has uh, production and transfer. Um, these are redstone energy conduits, and uh, these conduits are unlike buildcraft power uh, conductive pipes. They are effectively lossless. It costs a little bit of energy to put energy into a conduit, but once there is energy in the conduit, it is completely lossless to transfer over it. Um, from then on, you know, so it doesn't matter whether you're traveling one or a hundred uh, meters, it uh, it's it's the same. But you see that uh, the energy cell, it's it can accept up to a total of a hundred uh, joules a set or joules a tick, and output is configurable. So you can say, I really only want to accept this much, and you can use this to control where the energy goes. And there's a lot that you can do with this. Um, one other thing to note is where the conduit attaches to things, you see these little arrows. The arrow says which way the, uh, the energy is allowed to go. This is, you'll notice, it's actually storing the energy up because it's not going into the conduit. Let me pop this with a lever, or with the thing, and now the energy is actually unloading because I didn't actually tell it to do that. Oops. So uh, you whack it with the, the crescent hammer, and it says which way this particular block is either an input or an output from the uh, conduit network. So this is now an input into the conduit network and you'll see now it's not storing the energy up anymore and it's cooling down, it's not overheating anymore. Um, and if ah, and if we look at this, uh, there, there's no UI, I keep right clicking to try to get a UI and that was what was happening. Um, but so yeah, orange is input, blue is output, or orange is yeah, orange is that way, blue is that way. So uh, these both go in. So right now, we have some energy uh, in this cell. If I take an empty cell and attach it over here, nothing's happening because this cell is not outputting on either side, even though it's configured to say output at 50 joules a tick. So if we whack this this block with a wrench, now the energy can go that way. You see how the arrow kind of points in that direction? Now if we look in here, we are getting energy pretty rapidly. And this is going to empty up really quick because this is only producing for a tick instead of, uh, you know, the 50 that we're outputting. But if I quick throttle this back, it's back to going up. If we hit it to four, it's going to stay about the same because we're getting input and output at roughly the same rate. And this is going to be getting the same thing. So the energy is coming from here through this and into there. There's a lot of things you can do. You know, you can say, hey, save two of this. So this starts to accumulate a little bit, and you see it's slowly going up. And this is also slowly going up, but just not as fast. So I really like these. These are an just in every way superior alternative to 
Buildcraft's uh, conductive pipe. Except they're more expensive to make. They require a lot more infrastructure to make. You have to uh, you have to melt down uh, redstone to uh, to make. That's what this red stuff is in these. It's uh, it's liquid redstone, and uh, these storage units cost a diamond each in addition to that. Uh, but let's go over here. This is uh, an experiment that I ran showing different options for how uh, energy transfer uh, works and the, the loss. So what I've got down here is just a, these are basic steam or Stirling engines and they each burnt a single piece of coal. You see how they're all, or you see how the there were some red little lights flickering. But uh, in each of these, I burnt a single piece of coal, and that coal produces, if you see the tooltip, uh, 1.6 uh, kilojoules. So if we look in this storage unit, we got 1.6 kilojoules, because it went directly into it. Now normally, if you stick an engine directly onto a machine, you are going to lose some energy, because frequently the machine is not accepting energy as fast as the, uh, the machine uh, outputs it, but uh, energy transfer blocks like wooden pipes and conduit and uh, uh, storage uh, energy cells here, they can accept as much energy as you throw at them or up to 100 uh, joules, a, uh, joules a, a tick, uh, huge packets, and so, so nothing's lost in this direct transfer. If we look at this one where I put a wooden pipe in between, you'll notice it looks like the wooden pipe connects through. There's actually no energy transferred through because it's going the wrong way and it's confused and it's trying to actually send the energy from the cell into this. You can't just put a wooden pipe in between. For energy transfer, you have to add another kind of pipe. So if you look in here, there's some stored energy because it wasn't able to actually push it out. And you'll notice how it actually dumped some of it into the pipe and just sort of lost it and dissipated whatever. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, it, that just, just doesn't work. So the two options for uh, actual transfer pipes that Buildcraft provides are stone and gold. Um, and obviously the gold costs gold transport pipe and this costs stone and that's not cobble, that's actually smooth stone. And so if we look in this one, you'll notice we got 1500 uh, about and uh, so we lost we generated 1600 we lost uh, over a hundred energy going through that one block if we look at the gold the gold is supposed to be a lot more efficient and sure enough we barely lost any going over a single block of gold so that wasn't too bad but if we add this here's four stone we lost, you know, much more. We lost uh, about a third, or yeah, we, we lost we lost quite a bit of energy coming off of four. If we go across four gold, even though it's less lossy, it's still lossy. And then there's conduit. I have a single unit of conduit here, and we take a look, and we lost some energy. Uh, we lost a total of eighty energy because it had to fill up that, uh, you know, it, it spent some energy to, to go into there. If we look here, we lost two more just because I think it had, to, it had to fill up a little bit more, but you'll notice that the difference between this and this is basically zero, and that's only because that's, uh, you know, it was, it was new pipes. I think if I ran this again with another block of coal, Actually, you know, we'll, we'll run it with a stick, because a stick generates 100. That's a really easy uh, way to measure this. So we will throw one stick into the engine. And I will throw one stick into this engine. And we will run all the way down to our lossless one here. And we will send a single stick into there. And let's go back and see what this behaves like now. So, yep, see, the stick's already finished burning. It burns really quick. So we should have gotten... Okay, so we lost... Uh, let's see, we generated 100 energy. And uh, we went from... Uh, and we got... What was it? 
bleh, I'm I'm failing at math. We lost what five in the total, so it looks like we lose uh, we we lose a couple percent. It's a flat percentage. And this one, we lost the same exact amount. So this was this was two less than this one uh, before. And it's still two less, so we generated the same amount of energy. And once these uh, these conductive uh, or these conduits are fully warmed up, they're warmed up, and there is no further energy loss happening for using them, other than uh, or for for distance. There is a pig here. My daughter is in here watching this. But yeah, so that is uh, thermal expansions. Uh, energy transfer mechanics. They're totally totally worth using. Uh, if you can afford it. They cost Electrum uh, to use these things. They, there's a little bit more gold and redstone cost. Yes, more piggies. Piggies are all over my, my swamp. Chase the piggies away. But my name is Hilarion. These are a bunch of pigs jumping on my test uh, engines. And uh, thank you for watching.